Wipe out the bad bacteria in your stomach. If you have burning, bloating, burping, constipation or diarrhea, acid reflux, hiatal hernia, nausea, indigestion, this is for you. So first of all, what do we do about it? And then I'll go a deep dive of um, all the steps. So first of all, we're killing the bad bacteria. We're starving the bad bacteria. We're supporting the good bacteria. And we're also supporting motility or movement within the gut. We're reducing inflammation, supporting oral hygiene, and addressing specific infections as we find them and reducing inflammation. So now let's dive into all of those. So when it comes to killing the bad guys, we're talking about natural antimicrobials, anti against the microbe. We want to kill it. So things like garlic, and if you have acid reflux and this bothers you, Obviously, this is not for you, uh, but also there's green tea extract, which should be uh, fine for pretty much everyone. And uh, Manuka honey is an antibacterial. Uh, so uh, when you think of Manuka honey, uh, don't put it in the category of, of a sweet or a food because it has very special properties and it doesn't act that way. It doesn't uh, raise the blood sugar, it actually helps you burn fat, and it's an antimicrobial. It's also not inexpensive, so you're putting it in the category of a supplement, like something you would buy that you know you're going to pay a bit more for. All right, so now designations, because if you're going to pay the money, you want to you want to make sure you get the best quality. So the designations uh, that you might see on a bottle is something called U M as in Mary, F as in Frank. And that you want to be a 10 plus. And that's just authenticity, meaning it comes from New Zealand, it comes from the right plant, um, and you're going to get the benefits. The other thing is, is the uh, M as in Mary, G as in George O, M G O. And that should be 260 plus. And I like that designation even better because it talks about the strength of the antimicrobial properties, which is why you're taking it. So I think the really reliable companies will state what their MGO number is. And so you want it 260 and above. Okay, so now we want to starve the bad bacteria. And what do they like to eat? They love to eat sugar, simple carbohydrates. Um, they like alcohol. They like ultra-processed food. So uh, we don't want to give this to them. Now, I know that's a little easier said than done because you can, you'll crave these foods. And why do you crave them? Because they want to survive. And they're the predominant organism. And so they're kind of telling you, it's a weird concept, but you know, <laughs> they're kind of running running you and, and uh, causing you to crave these foods because they want to survive. And you have to be sort of a, above that and, and just really uh, show restraint and start starving them out by not feeding them. Also, uh, a non-food recommendation for this is to stop grazing, meaning just eating all day long. Uh, now, this excludes you if you're somebody who has very unstable blood sugar and you literally have to eat every two hours or you pass out. I understand how that is. Once we fix that, you'll be able to do what I'm recommending, which is wait a good four hours in between meals. And then I love a 12 to 14 hour, not going beyond 15 hour fast at night. And that allows what's called your migrating motor complex. Just think of it as the vacuum cleaner that comes through your gut when you're not eating after a period of time and just cleans out debris and bad bacteria. So if we don't stay away from food for enough time, we're not allowing that vacuum cleaner to come in and, and clean house and get rid of the bad guys. Okay, so then we want to support the good bacteria. And this is fermented foods like kimchi and yogurt uh, are some fermented foods. You can look up others, prebiotic foods. Now, in the prebiotic foods, we have onions and garlic. And if you're, not, if you're someone with reflux and, and you know these bother you, then obviously uh, don't utilize these. But there's also leeks and asparagus. And again, you can look up online um, the, the full longer list. And then we also have soluble fiber. Very, very important to feed the good bacteria. Flax seeds, chia seeds, psyllium. And again, you can look up online for, for a longer list, but get these in your diet and they really will support the good bacteria in a, in a, in a material way. All right, now supporting and promoting motility. That is this motion through the gut because 
Food should only stay in your, in your stomach for about two to four hours. And when you have uh, bad bacteria, sometimes it's, it's moving too slowly. It's called gastroparesis. And you can think of it as, as, as paralysis. Um, gastro simply means stomach, so that's where that word comes from. Maybe you've been diagnosed with it, or maybe you just feel like you eat and food just sits there. Uh, patients always describe it as it just feels like there's a brick sitting in my stomach. Um, so that can be symptoms of it. And in order to uh, support, support motility, ginger tea, which is delicious, um, diaphragmatic breathing, so practicing what I call box breathing. You can look up online how to do that. And also phys you physically moving after meals. So you taking a stroll after you eat every meal, just 10 to 15 minutes, just even if you're you know, in, in your office building, just just walk around, you know, just get some motion and that will help with, with overall motility, which, which helps move things through so that there's not a stagnation occurring so the bad bacteria can multiply. Then we have reducing inflammation. Now this is a big one and I'm gonna give you some things to do on your own, but depending on the severity of it, you might need help in this arena because inflammation is the cause of pretty much every disease we're trying to avoid from heart disease, diabetes, cancer, autoimmune disease, dementia, obesity. And so depending on the, the depth and breadth and severity of your inflammation, you may or may not need help. But you can start with omega-3 fatty acids, aloe vera juice, curcumin, and you can try those and, and see how you do. I'm not giving you um, amounts of these things because I'm not your doctor, so I'm not prescribing. This is an informational video. It's not a prescription video. Uh, also, we have good oral hygiene. Your digestion starts in your mouth, and if you have uh, swollen gums, gums that bleed too easily, then uh, you have infections, and those infections then uh, get into your gut. So they also can put you at risk for heart disease. So it's very important that you go see your dentist and, um, and, and get your oral hygiene in check and your gums healthy. And then last but not least is addressing specific infections as we find them. So this is the arena that you'll need some help with because of course you have to know what the specific infections are. Um, Helicobacter pylori that I mentioned earlier is a very common one because it can create stomach ulcers ultimately over a long period of time it has a potential to create stomach cancer so it's not something you want to ignore a lot of times people um, get tested for it during an endoscopy and that's fine but the endoscopy can miss it a good portion of the time i prefer a stool analysis which also tells you uh, genetically about the organism whether it's a highly virulent or less virulent genetic strain so there's different genetic strains of h pylori and you really want to know which one you have because if you have a virulent one you want to be darn sure you kill it effectively and take measures to to not get the not to get infected again okay so those were those were the nine points, sorry, seven points of uh, how to rid yourself of stomach bacteria. And uh, you can get started on those. Let me know how you do. If you like the information in this video, consider subscribing to the channel. I'm trying to increase my subscribers so more people can see the videos, avail themselves of this type of help, which is not widely available, and uh, get the help they need. Also, share it with a friend. Uh, give it a thumbs up. Comment. I answer pretty much every comment I get, so I look forward to hearing from you, and we'll talk soon.